Hello there, welcome back to another bonus episode on Let's Play Battlefield 1942, The Liberation of Khan. And uh, I've done a couple ones on the Canadian side. I did one where we explored the German side, but there was some team switching, so I'm going to show off the use of the tank and the German manner of defense on Liberation of Khan. The way it usually goes is a whole bunch of people will spawn at the river flag, and defend there and you'll have a couple of engineers at the bridge flag. Sometimes the engineers can be a bit overzealous and they'll put a bunch of landmines on it even before the German tanks can get through. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be the case here. Those two red dots show that our stationary artillery is being manned and there are no landmines here. And as typical there's going to be a tank duel with one or two tanks on each side. Now, if he had managed to kill me and then gotten through the bridge and taken the flag, this map would take on a whole different character. But uh, as it stands, I'm going to get an opportunity to do a really interesting kind of defense. I'm not going to do the usual way. The other way to do defense is to do it the fun way, the aggressive way, to ambush people, just to drive around and destroy people, particularly on that was the Canadian artillery. And if you can destroy the Canadian vehicles, then they're completely uh, screwed because the infantry aren't going to survive the trip. There's a huge no man's land between the Canadian main and the first flag, which is going to be heavily guarded anyway. I will say the Canadians, in addition to two tanks at their main base, they also get a mobile artillery base, a mobile artillery piece, which is more useful than the norm, because the Canadian version can be fired while you drive the artillery. So it's not as good as a tank, but it's a lot more similar to a tank than the normal artillery. That bridge over there leads to the Canadian main base. Now I'm not going to drive over the bridge, obviously, because I'd get killed instantly. This guy's just standing there. I guess really accepting of the inevitable. Yeah, I guess there's a windmill on this map too, I'd forgotten about that. Pause, I think there's an ammo crate toward the bottom of that windmill as opposed to at the top. And the windmill doesn't really guard anything, it's just kind of there. Alright, so I'm down to half strength now. But if I can keep my distance, and all right, there comes the other Canadian tank. Now I'm pretty sure that he spotted me. He must have seen me fire, so I'm gonna have to deal with him. Yeah, here he comes. And the Canadian artillery is right behind him. And the Sexton got the credit for the kill, so that is an example of the artillery getting a kill. Of course, I had virtually no health left anyway. I might have been able to win the duel against that tank. I think I had one more shot to go off against him, but any kind of splash damage from that artillery would have killed me straight away. So here I am, I've become a tank camper, just waiting for it to respawn. The other tank has been taken uh, from this base and it's being driven down, which is useful. I mean, you've really got to get these tanks out and you've got to keep using them. Um, Otherwise, it's kind of like having chess pieces all stuck in the back row, not doing anything. Alright, I, I, I believe he's attempting to communicate with me. <laughs> Alright, if he was camping for a tank, hopefully, then he's lost. Um, at any rate, so you kind of want to have some tank campers. One, two tank campers, each one spawning in. Um, you know, keeping them in use, bring them down south of the bridge, and see if you can continue to ambush people. Our people at the river flag are holding strong, as they often do. But if the Canadian can mass, Canadians can mass their armors, armor pieces against the river flag, then they should have a good chance of taking it. And of course, I've shown you in two different bonus episodes how that can be done from the Canadian perspective. You know, 
the Germans definitely have a good potential to defend that base. I mean, they've got a tank, they've got an artillery piece, a couple of stationary artillery, they've got a repair pad for the tank for the artillery to sit on. Alright, here comes the artillery. And there it goes. Yeah, the one weakness of the artillery, it's more difficult to maneuver, and it's got a lot less hit points. But if they can get the drop on you, at least it doesn't have to switch between the driver and artillery positions to fire. The APC, of course, big target, can't really do anything, but uh, it's got a lot of hit points. A lot more than you would expect from a truck. And I believe the guy that I just killed near the bridge was a, a bazooka troop. So that's going to be uh, an issue. If they start bringing out engineers and bazooka troops against me, then their infantry potentially get a kill. Alright, there's a tank just behind the APC. I don't think that tank actually saw me. The APC was uh, a useful piece of improvised cover for me. Alright, now there are other tanks are coming in. I mean, it is kind of funny for me to be out here by myself versus that base because they've got so much armor that spawns in. But if you can take them on one at a time, you're going to be in good shape. Alright, now I, I guess I had spawned in as a sniper earlier on, so I can't repair the damage to this tank. But the reason why I've driven all the way out here is just to kind of throw the enemy off balance, otherwise they would pursue me and probably kill me. I mean, just one straight-up duel between me and another tank should get me killed because I've already taken damage. So I have to completely rely upon outmaneuvering the tank. All he has to do uh, to kill me is just trade hits. All right. I definitely got to get out of here and find some way to get a a better angle of attack on it to ambush it. That's one thing you can often use the windmill for is to... Okay, he's right behind me, never mind. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna have to go in circles around here and hope that he can't line up a good shot, because with my the rear of my tank facing, he only needs to get one hit in. I'm going to try to keep moving. I've gotten... Looks like he got a partial hit on me or something. Okay, it looks like there's two tanks now. Yeah, best to keep moving. I'm down to half strength. One good hit against the treads of my tank should kill me. But if you can keep moving and take advantage of your superior ability to firewall on the move, if you have said ability, then you can win a duel like that. And there's the artillery again. See, the only reason why he's a threat is simply because the Canadian version is superior. Yeah, there we go. And I guess the Canadians did manage at some point to get a flag. Uh, what often happens is an infantry will eventually sneak across the river and usually take the church flag. I guess I was so caught up in doing this uh, defense. Of course, that prevented them from bringing in their vehicles, which is always nice. And it's always nice to prevent them from being able to take the river flag so they don't have that extra spawn point. This is going to be a really short round of Liberation of Kong. Very, very short. The ticket bleed was being inflicted against them for a uh, the time. And there we traded hits and traded kills. You know, often the uh, Liberation of Kong is considered kind of a bland map because of, uh, it's just not very distinctive when you compare it to some of the other bonus uh, maps, especially. But uh, it's got some interesting dynamics on it. Obviously, there's usually a bunch of urban combat in this area, but you can have uh, quite a bit of armor action in that no-man's land and really have a different 
kind of dynamic to the map. Not sure why the flag was completely undefended. But at any rate, uh, their last couple tickets are going to knock down, and that'll do it for this bonus episode on Let's Play Battlefield 1942. As soon as that guy dies, and I'll see you on the next episode.